Family Theater presents Claire Booth Luce and J. Carol Nash. From Hollywood, the Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater, brings you J. Carol Nash in the title role of Pepe Vergo, American Citizen. Now to introduce the drama, your hostess, Claire Booth Luce. Thank you. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Before we proceed to our drama, a word about dramatic force a very special kind of dramatic force, prayer. It is to make this force better known and more deeply used and loved that family theater exists. Family theater asks all of us to pray, to pray with courage and with hope. Now to Pepe Virgo, American citizen, starring J. Carol Nash. <laughs> true democracy, government under God, is from the people and for them. Pepe Virgo was one of those Americans who became a citizen by naturalization. Pepe was yet to learn why we dare not and cannot destroy certain inalienable rights. On your lunch hour, don't you guys do enough of it during the day? <laughs> well, 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 it's a, it's a confess, eh? It's a lots of fun. <laughs> Tell him my goodness for your violin playing, Pepe. <laughs> well, sure. When a skinny animal, I have to keep the fingers supple and strong, huh? You work the strings with the left hand, and then you need the strength for the movement. Yeah, it works both ways. Violin playing makes him a good skinner, and skinning makes him a good violinist, huh, Pepe? The best four and a half fingered violinist in town. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah, wise guy, and if you had 50 fingers, he'd still be a better skinner than you are. Okay, everybody, back to the hides. Come on, come on. Hey, Pepe. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm over here, boss. What do you want? Uh, Peppy, you have to go get your time. What? The? Get my time, boss? I'm sorry, Peppy, but you have to go. Yeah, but but why, boss? My, my work uh, no satisfactory? I'm, I'm going to do something wrong? Why am I have to get my time? Don't ask me, Peppy. All I know is I got orders to fire you. You can't work here. I... I can't to work here? Or in any food plant in the country. Yeah, but why? 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 What am I do? There's a health inspector waiting in the office to see you. All I know, Peppy, is I got orders to fire you. Yes, is me, Angela. Uh, no practice to violin now. You helping me with the table, huh? I no practice. For a place, for a place. Ruthie from the next door come to eat tonight with her fella. Ruthie and me set a trap. <laughs> I fill his stomach with lasagna. She fill his eyes with a pretty face in pretty dress. Tonight he proposed to marry with her, huh? <laughs> What's the matter? You not think he's nice? Ruthie is fine, girl, Arthur is fine fella. They should be married about the time. Yeah, he is, he's a nice. Pepe, no, watch what you do. A knife, a fork, a spoon for each person, huh? Why you put two spoons here and two knives here? Oh, you just a man. I finish you. Take yourself some wine, huh? I'm not thirsty. Ah, you be thirsty after the lasagna. I'm not hungry. Pepe, no. There is a something wrong, huh? I just lose my job. Madre mia. Fired. Never before in my life. Fired. For what? Because it's order. Health and respect, he orders. What am I doing now? How, how we pay the rent? How we gonna buy the food? Oh, we manage. There is just the two of us we manage, huh? That's the door. Oh, no, don't you worry, Papino. We be all right. No, don't forget, we make it nice for Ruthie, huh? Hey, do not open the door. Just a minute, just a minute. 
Hello, Angela. Uh, Peppy. Hiya, Peppy. Here, Angela. Oh, look, Peppino, the lovely flowers, roses. Are oh, they beautiful? Almost uh, beautiful as much as Ruthie, huh, Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been telling her, but she won't believe me. Oh, why you not believe him, Ruthie? I'm trying new tactics, Angela. I'm saying no to everything until he feels safe. Then when he asks the important question, I'm going to surprise him and say yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Peppy, the one thing I understand less than Einstein's theory is women. That makes you a very sensible fella. <laughs> <laughs> All day I've been trying to ask her to marry me. I know she loves me, but well, she refuses to let me pop the question till later tonight. Oh, honestly, what can be done about men, Angela? They think it's their prerogative to go around disrupting plans. Well, please, come on, let's see that. Um, I'm certain after the lasagna, questions are going to be permitted. <laughs> Charge. Sure took a beating at your table, Angela. Ah, he gonna propose tonight, huh? No more to worry about you figure. Uh-uh. It just doesn't work that way. No, well, no, no. You, you and the route to go. Angela and me, we're gonna stay home. We want you to come with us, Pepe. Angela, how about you and Pepe coming to the movies? Uh, good idea, huh? Sure, young people should have sat in a private time together. I don't think Pepe enjoys our company. Well, I remember just yesterday he was the joking type man. Quick on the trigger with a gag, ready at the drop of a hat to play the violin. I know Arthur isn't much to look at, Peppy, but he isn't that depressing. He, uh, he had the trouble today. No, go on, go on, bust the bust. Oh, I'm sorry, Peppy. Gee, can, can we do anything? There's nothing that someone can do. Oh, try us, Peppy. I won't let you look so glum. Today, uh, he loses his uh, job. Oh... Oh, I'm so sorry, Peppy. Gee, how come, Peppy? I was a fad. I'm a skilled worker. They said the plant I'm, I'm one of the best. But I'm a fad. <sighs> Those fools don't appreciate a good worker. You'll get another job, Peppy. There are plenty of packing houses in this city. You don't understand. I must have not to work on the food of plants anyway. That's, that's an order. Nobody can issue that kind of an order. They should. To me, Peppy Virgo. I must not work what is a food. Health department inspectors say that. What am I doing now? Dig ditches? Well, well, where does he get his nerve? What health department inspector? What did he say exactly, Peppy? He say... He say I... Typhoid carrier. <gasps> what? He say I start epidemic in the north two times. That they warned me before. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know. But I... I can do nothing is. He's an order from the state. Well, I should hope to smile you can do something. You're an American citizen. Yes, yeah, sure. Me. I'm a citizen. Oh, you don't have to stand for that nonsense. Where do they get their nerve firing you? Art, your sister works for a lawyer. Call her up. Now, please excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry I make a fuss. It's my trouble. Go on, you go to the movies. Please, you go enjoy yourself. Well, don't stand there like a dope, Art. Call your sister. <laughs> The proper place for his tonics, Mr. Vernon, is in the theater, not the courtroom. Now, if you'll proceed calmly. My client, Pepe Virgo, employed by the municipal packing plant, whose work was admittedly satisfactory, was willfully and arbitrarily discharged. This action utterly deprives him of his livelihood. I therefore petition the court for a writ of mandate to the municipal packing plant, ordering that Pepe Virgo's job be returned to him. Is the health inspector concerned present in the court? Yes, Your Honor. Step forward, please. What have you to say bearing on this case? Pepe Virgo comes from Hembley County, which, as you know, is in the north of the state. The first contact the health department had with him was when he was tracked down as the source of an epidemic in that county. He is a typhoid carrier. Yeah, but that's a mistake, Judge. Remain seated, Mr. Virgo. Go on, Inspector. A typhoid carrier, although not a victim of typhoid himself, passes the bacteria on to others. We informed Pepe Virgo of his condition and cautioned him to find employment in other than a food industry. The next time the health department met him was when an epidemic in Ogden County was tracked to its source. Virgo again. Pepe, you know nothing about Ogden. No, I'm not. Your Honor, this is the first mention there has been of Ogden County. 
My client claims he never lived there. In Ogden County, as now, Your Honor, Pepe Virgo denied he was the man. In most cases, typhoid carriers cooperate with us. In those cases they don't, the health department sends warnings and detailed descriptions to all agencies in the state. This man is a menace to the public. All the papers concerned with this case have been submitted to the court. Just a moment. Hmm, yes. Pepe Virgo, come forward, please. Your name? Pepe Virgo. Age? 45 years, last month. You lived in Hembley County and in Ogden County. In Hembley, yes, Your Honor, but, but in Ogden, no, no, never. According to the health inspector, Pepe Virgo has lied before about his place of residence. Uh, but, Your Honor, I'm, I'm not the Pepe Virgo which he means. Would you raise your hands, please? Both of them. Sure, Your Honor. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. Half of little finger, left hand missing. Pepe Virgo, obviously you are the same man. You are a menace to the public health. And if the laws of this state permitted, I would commit you to a penal institution. Writ denied. Hey, buddy, I'm in, I'm in. Case dismissed. And, and they, they, they say I'm a liar. I'm, I'm not telling the truth. I say the truth. There's many men who skin the animal, got a piece of the finger off. But it's a mistake. I'm not the man. Well, then what happened, Pepe? That's enough, you know. The judge, he talked about putting me in jail. I tell you, you, you cannot fight for the state. You, you got to get into trouble. No, you won't get into trouble. You're fighting for your rights. Lies that cost money. If you not get the job back, we don't have no money anyway. Angela, what's, what's happening to you if they put me in jail? Who's going to take care of you? What's the matter? I know can work, I know can cook, I know can wash. Oh, oh. I prove my pepino no make people sick, no make the epidemic. We keep a fighting. Good morning, Pepe. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm all right, Hans. How's the butcher business? Eh? Fine, fine. No? What's happening on your case? Well, my... My lawyer, Mr. Van, he's uh, making me get a doctor's examination, photographs of my face, uh -huh. uh, lots of evidence, he said. But and then, oh, but, uh, Hans, uh, soon, soon, soon I hope I'm, I'm going to be able to pay your bill, huh? Never mind the bill, Pepe. Tell Angela I am angry that she charges not any more meat here. Sure, I'm going to tell her. Hello, Pepe. <laughs> Come into the store. I have a new ice cream flavor, a free sample. No, I'm a kind of judge. Angela's waiting over me for lunch. Ah, now, wait a minute. That's all right. Take some home for dessert. It's a, it's a new dessert. You be my first customer and my ice cream tester. It's a free sample. That's a very nice judge, but uh, we don't eat the ice cream. Hello, Mr. Forgo. How's the case going? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I guess Mr. Walaski, my, my lawyer, he's going to take it to the uh, district uh, court uh, of appeal. Huh? But uh, what's the matter? You know what today, huh? Oh, I'm on a night shift now. Mr. Vorgo, I, I know I'm not going to say this good, you know, but I tell you, you need anything you ask me, huh? Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Walaski. I'm going to need anything. I don't need anything. All right. Well, goodbye, Mr. Uh, goodbye, Vorgo. goodbye, Mr. Walaski. <laughs> Just a moment. Uh, he comes. Uh, Peppino, the lawyer on the telephone. Uh, here, a talk. All right. Uh, hello, Mr. Vernon. Hello, Mr. Virgo. I have some good news. Oh, good? Good? Something is happening? The medical report has come back. It shows absolutely no sign of typhoid bacteria. Oh, no, sir. Of course, you should. Are you here, Angela? No sign of the typhoid, huh? <laughs> Another thing, even more important. I sent a man up to Hembley County with those photos of you. He just wired me that he's got a lead on someone who knew the other Pepe Virgo. Oh, it's, oh, it's fine, Mr. Van. It's, it's fine. Hey, now the district court appeals ahead. Now they're going to give us something, huh? Well, uh, in reference to that, the district court of appeals has refused to reverse the trial court. Huh? We'll take it to the state court of final resort. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Mr. Van. The doctor, he's saying I'm, I'm not the typhoid carrier. Huh? We got a pictures that are going to show the man with the typhoid, not to me. But the court is... Is it not to listen? It's just a technicality. Now, I know you're innocent, and sure, I think... Sure, sure, sure. Sure, you know I'm innocent. Angela knows I'm innocent. I know I'm innocent. But I'm only... I'm... 
I'm a little man. Said he says I'm a guilty, state says I'm a guilty, but what a chance I'm a guy. I tell you, I tell you all the time, all of you, you, you cannot fight to the state. But we can fight. I understand how bitter you must be, Mr. Virgo. No, no, please, please. I, I know better. I, I just want to forget. We keep making the trouble with the judges and we get into more trouble. Goodbye, goodbye, please, Mr. Van. Thank you very much. What's the matter? At first, you were happy. I don't want to talk no more, Angel. Mr. Moroni, he's offering me a job of construction again tomorrow. I'm going to work for him. Oh, you're crazy. You, you're going to push a wheelbarrow. Oh, Pepina, you got a dread. I got a nothing. They take your job away any time they want. The same here like everywhere else. <laughs> Hello, How are you, Mr. Mr. Virgo? Miss Desmond, have a chair for you. Hello. Hello. One for you, Mrs. Virgo. Thank, Thank you. you. We came to see you, Mr. Vernon, because Angela felt... Yeah, I feel that uh, Papino is going to die of the broken heart. Uh, four months uh, he no played the violin. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Virgo. I'm convinced your husband's innocent. There's been a terrible mistake. Everything's been proper and legal. It's just that the circumstances are against us. Well, Angela feels that perhaps court action isn't the thing that will snap Peppy out of it. <laughs> You say that Peppy's innocent. Why are you sure? The medical reports are negative. Then, too, my agent in Hamley contacted people who knew the original Peppy Virgo. When shown your husband's picture, Angela, they were sure it wasn't the same man. Oh, that's what's the important thing. Peppino feels his friends are afraid for him to touch their food. If it could be proved to the neighbors that Peppino has... My dear no Mrs. Virgo, we can prove it to the world if he'd only let me take it further. Oh, never mind the world, <coughs> just to the neighbors. The only way it can be proved to anybody with complete satisfaction is through the courts. It's very frustrating to know that a man's innocent, that he can be cleared, but he won't let me fight to clear him. Angela, if you could only convince him to trust Mr. Vernon. Oh, he trusts nobody, especially lawyers now. Mr. Vernon, you, you can't just prove to the neighbors, huh? Well, I don't know, Mrs. Virgo. The day I hear from the state court a final resort, I'll visit you at your home with all the evidence I've gathered on this case. Perhaps then I can convince your husband to let me go on with it. Oh, Mr. Vernon, if you bring a smile back to Pepino, if you make him go to the violin again, I would pray for you to all the same. Mrs. Virgo, just pray that your husband loses his fear of fighting for his rights. Oh, for a long time I pray that. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Vernon. God bless you. Gracias, molto. <laughs> Uh, just, just, uh, just a minute. Uh, what? What's that, Angela? Somebody else is coming. People are just dropping. Oh, hold on, everybody. Just just to drop in. Just like that, huh? Good evening, everybody. Hi. Mr. Vernon. Hi. May I come in? Uh, excuse me. Please, please come in. Please. Please. Nobody make a mistake with what I say, huh? You all are welcome. But I know like the games that will be played with me. What's going on here? Oh, nobody's been playing games, Papi, no. It's a just a... Perhaps I can explain, Mr. Virgo. I've just heard from the state court of final resort. Yeah, but why you do that? I told you I was finished. What happened with the court? They refused to review the case. Refused? Okay. Now everybody's convinced, huh? The state they cannot be fought. The state can be fought. We've got evidence to prove that you are not a typhoid carrier, that you've been mistaken for another man. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Sure. Yeah, that's a fine. You got the proof. What could that do, huh? The judges, they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen because I'm just a little man. Not because you're a little man, Mr. Virgo. The higher courts have simply passed on whether or not you got a fair trial. Unfortunately, the evidence we have now is not presented at your first trial. There's only one way to go back to that first court to be able to present that evidence. Let me take it to the Supreme Court. Supreme? Supreme Court of the United States? Yes. You're crazy. Me, Pepe Virgo, go to the Supreme Court of the United States? Oh, Mr. Vernon, good man, Papino, do what he says. Sure, let do him. Do it. That's the matter. That's the matter. You all are crazy. You want to get to me deported? You want me to go to jail? Supreme Court of the United States. You're within your rights, Mr. Virgo. Nobody's going to deport you or put you in jail. Do you think we can win, Mr. Vernon? I'm sure of it, Miss Desmond. What'll it take to fight it, Mr. Vernon? Not too much. There'll be some cost for printing of briefs and records and filing of petitions. I want no fee for myself. But costs would come to approximately $200. $200? Oh. What is $200? The whole neighborhood will chip in and it is the fight of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a fine. That's a fine. Just a fine. Sure, everybody's going to pay, huh? 
So well, I'm a donor in a charity. I don't need a no charity to get in the more trouble. Everybody's a button in my business, so the United States of Governors are going to get the mad at me. And it is not charity, Pepe. No, Pepe, we do it for ourselves. What do you all got to do with it? It is very important to us. We all dreamed the same dream when we came to this country, Pepe. Sure, here in America, there's a joy of life for us. Uh, uh, this country is good to be citizen of, good to live in. That's what we think, all of us, when we come. Remember what we used to say to each one the other when we studied for our papers? Yeah. Security, justice... Dignity, a country where a man can be full grown up. And... Sure, Peppy. You must prove for your friends that democracy has the belief in the value and in the dignity of the human being. Well, for us, there would be no place to go. Sure, I'm all. always a believer. I'm always a believer in democracy. Everything for everybody. But, but now I'm a, I'm a feeler just, just like nobody. I'm a kind of do nothing. If, uh, listen, if a nobody can go to the Supreme Court of the United States, that is something. If the government makes a mistake, and an injustice is done, and then the government makes right the mistake, well, that then is they the... have the security, the dignity. Oh. Yeah, what's the matter? I know how the security, the dignity, the hum. Sure, I'm on all of those things. Yeah, but, but, what, what am I going to do? For us, you must prove the dream is true for all the neighborhood, for all the people in the world who have followed the dream to this country. But what, what makes you think they're going to let them into the Supreme Court? I believe what we have read when we studied for our papers. Sure, <laughs> you remember, Peppy. We used to read to each other. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. remember. Sure, I'm remember. I'm, I'm never going to forget, but I'm going to remember we hold this truth to be self-evident. All men create equal. That they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among the days of life, liberty, liberty pursuit of the happiness, that, that, that the security is right. It is the unanimous opinion of this court that the refusal of the trial on the grounds of newly discovered evidence was an error and a denial to the plaintiff of due process of law. It is therefore ordered that Pepe Virgo be given a new trial. <laughs> Angela, Angela, the door. Ah, I'm a coming, I'm a coming. Angela, I heard the good news and I'm so happy. Oh, Ruthie, it's a very good. Everything's gonna be all right now. Everything's gonna be wonderful. Peppino is playing his violin again. Uh, uh, that's right, Ruthie. Hey, Ruthie, I, I'm gonna get all of my back to play back. And Mr. Vernon say it's a cinch to win the case. Peppy, how does it feel being a little man now? What? What do you, what do you mean, a little man? Who's a little man? Uh, when a fellow citizen of the United States of America that he's as big as any man in the whole world. This is Claire Booth loose again. Everywhere I go, people ask me, when is the United Nations going to bring us peace? The answer is that peace cannot be produced by organized political groups alone, however good the organization. There are no man-made political or economic uh, blueprints for peace which alone can guarantee it. I don't mean we all can't discover the laws of peace. We can, but we can't invent them. It's like this. Take Euclid whose geometry we study in school. Now, Euclid didn't create, he discovered the mathematical laws for geometry. The laws themselves had always been in the universe. He worked them out, but he didn't create them any more than the miner creates the gold he digs out of a mountain. There's a God-given law of peace, too, but it can be found only in the hearts of men of goodwill. Only goodwill, brotherly love, can cast out the fear in men's hearts of other men, and fear is the root of love. The fear is the root of all war. Peace is the trustful triangle formed by love between each man, his neighbor, and God. Another thing, 
We must never forget that even though the world itself can't have peace, every individual can. You and I can find peace for ourselves through prayer and union with a divine plan. And if each of us would try to find peace for ourselves, we would be helping to find it for all the world, peace. No, no made man-made man plot or plan, no diplomatic maneuvers can advance it, no international organization or treaties can guarantee it, there's no balance of power scheme, no army that can enforce it, unless, unless God is the base of the triangle formed by him, with each of us on one side and our neighbor on the other. Everyone in America is yearning for peace on this Memorial Day. Our best chance to have it is to pray for peace and to keep peace in our own lives and souls. And so the great contribution each of us can make is to put our own interior life in order according to God's law of love. From that love, from that order, peace cannot fail to spring. And the family theater reminds us, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you J. Carol Nash in Pepe Bergo, American Citizen. Claire Booth Luce was your hostess. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Barbara Eiler, Herb Rawlinson, Herb Vigran, Charles Seal, Carol Dierenforth, Howard Culver, Jack Raymond, and John Sheehan. The script was written by Fred Freiberger, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at the same time when Family Theater will present Margaret O'Brien, Ricardo Montalban, and Rita Johnson in The Hold Out Heart. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Music